Welcome everyone to a, another one of our AIM Learn Fast webinars. This is a uh, webinar number 162. It's the uh, fourth one of our, it's the fourth season of doing these and this is the eighth one. Uh, this one is, is we're gonna go back a little bit and, and hit some, um, some topics we may, may have talked a little bit about in the past. And, uh, but we're gonna look at some new ways of using them, uh, how to apply them in, in a different way. And um, the, um, one of the cool things about this is, is of course I get support uh, phone calls and emails uh, as part of my regular duties. And the, one of the things that um, happens a lot is somebody will ask a question or something, it'll trigger uh, my, my mind and I, you know, it's like, okay, how do we handle that? What's the best way to handle that for this particular user? And, um, and that's what happened here We a long time uh, a webinar attendee from uh, here near where I'm at. He's, uh, he's down in Oregon is, uh, is John Barnum. And John Barnum called me um, uh, a month or two ago, something. And um, what John was struggling with, something that I struggle with and why, why maybe it hit even uh, hit close to home for me is, is uh, uh, John was trying to do some of our, our if statements in some math channels. And what he's trying to do is filter out uh, some engine data and to get down to only when he's at full throttle, he wanted to see what the Lambda and the fuel pressure and uh, you know some of his engine parameters. And he wanted to understand those better. And, but yet John wasn't, uh, wasn't super good with math channels and, uh, and he was struggling. I remember getting a, I, I'd sent him a, uh, you know, some, some stuff in the past with math channels in it and, and, uh, and I'd screen captured some stuff and had, okay, here's what you, here's the best way to handle this. And uh, it was about 30 minutes later, I, I could tell it was a frustrated email note that comes back that says, uh, he says, I don't know if it's something to the effect of, don't know if it's smoke coming out of the computer or out of my ears, but I, uh, I can't get the math channels to work, right? And I thought, okay, well, and and I'm not super good at math channels either. I can I can bump my way through, and it takes me a little while. And I look back for some examples, and I cut and paste, and I and I can work my way through math channels. But I'm not a I'm not a math guy, right? I, rearranging formulas and writing stuff up is not my strength. So um, so I thought, okay, well, how how can I help John get to what he really wants? And, and yet do it in a way that's uh, maybe a little bit more simple, uh, easier to do for him. So it's a tool that I've used, a couple little tools that I've used to do what he's trying to do. And uh, so I brought him, uh, I brought him onto a Zoom call and, and we started to chat about um, how to get that done. And I thought, well, you know, that would make a great, uh, a great webinar of, of uh, for some of, there's a lot of people out there, maybe they just have a solo uh, maybe they have, uh, you know, maybe the, the this data thing in math channels isn't something that they really want to get that deep into, but yet they want that data and they want to understand it and they want some easy ways to do things. So I, the, the title of this is Simplifying Your Data Analysis. The goal is effortless yet powerful. And, um, and so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about not building a math channel to filter out your fuel pressure or your lambda or your, your uh, you know, all the different things, ignition angles, whatever it happens to be, when you're only at 90% throttle and above, we're going to try to do that with map segments where the driver always is at full throttle, and uh, and then bring that into a uh, in, into a channels report. So, let's uh, uh, most of our data today in the, in today's webinar, we're going to jump right into live data, and uh, and I'm going to show you a few tricks and different things as I mentioned that uh, that maybe help you will, will help you do this. So, let's bring up. Uh, Race Studio 3 and uh, and have some of John's data right here in front. And uh, the data is from, if you look off to the right there, you can see that's uh, it's Portland uh, Raceway up in, uh, in Northern Oregon, right at the Washington, Oregon border. And, um, and what John really wanted to do was, especially on the back straightaway, he wanted to look at, I brought up some channels here and just a, I always create a tab that I call either scratch or working, where I can always just bring channels in, throw channels away, and I don't worry about having to save that profile. It truly is just set up for me to add channels when I want to. And that's where we're at. We're in a working tab. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see from his data here, he's got the, the these Lambda values and he's got his fuel pressure. And on the back straightaway, he goes to full throttle right in this area right here. And, uh, and he comes off full throttle here and he's got a no lift shift. You can see the RPM going up and down. And what he really wants to know is what is the 
is the lambda values with the the air fuel ratios of his of his lambda and one of the ways we do this as i mentioned is we can do some if statements in in uh, in some math channels build them where it's if your throttle is below 90 percent the value goes to zero then in the channel reports you can easily build a, an average for everything and it only gives you the averages when your throttle was greater than 90 percent or whatever number you picked well math channels being a struggle for me and john we this was a, this a different way of doing it so the um i'm going to show you another quick way before we actually fully jump out to that is here is this area right here is an area where he's full throttle for a pretty good chunk of time towards the end of the back straightaway. One of the things that I do a lot is, is I use the delta function with the average turned on. So if you go into the settings for your, for, um, your time distance graph and you can come down to the what to do with your delta values, I always select and have it stored in my, um, my user profile is just the the channel average is my main thing I want to see. You can also see the the uh, the rate uh, of the change between a couple of points, the average between those same two points, or the average throwing out the zeros. The zeros equal a null value for doing the the math for averaging. But in this case, since it's going to all be up, we're gonna we're gonna just talk about the um, the the average. So I've got it set up that way. So I'm gonna cancel out, and if I turn on the delta mode, I click that. It just locked out wherever my cursor was. It it put a line there. It, it retained that line, and then it allows me to come in and, and left click, and you can see that there's a second line. The the locked or the anchored point is blue. The the new um, cursor, the cursor as it's always been, is the whatever color you had made it. I I colorize my cursor red, so I'm just going to pull that over here towards near the end of that air that lambda value. And in this box over here, we, we are showing that the what these three values are are interesting. And I'm going to go through those real quickly. The, the, the first value in the line is, is the same as your, your normal channel tags is. 0.88 is the click wherever you are clicking your cursor, just like it would normally be. OK, that's the first data point. The middle data point in parentheses is the difference between the two lines that you drew. Let's use the speed one as one that makes it a little bit easier to see. So 124.5 is the speed here at the red one, the, the actual moving point, the, the delta point there. The 13.2 uh, is the mile per hour change from the anchor point to the cursor point. It's a positive number, so it increased. If I go the other way, it's a negative number, 12.7. So that is, it lost 12.7 miles per hour between these two points. So let's go back over here to where we were. And then the third one in parentheses, 118.1 in this case, that's the average speed. Now I use that average for a lot of different things. Maybe the average G's in a corner. I mean, you got a long sweeping corner. You want to know you made a shock change or a tire pressure change. That average uh, ends up being a number that you can do with a lot of things. Uh, the biggest one for this example is the lambda, not only was it 0.89 where I clicked there, because it's zero, it was 0.89 there. So the average in between of this time is 0.89. That happens to be up here in the top, 5.9 seconds of full throttle, 1,030 feet. So it's a good sample. There's a lot of data points in there. And uh, the average is 0.89, something you can kind of hang your hat on and know exactly what that uh, what that air fuel ratio was while at th full throttle, even after the the no lift shift and the ignition interrupt or whatever, however it's set up. OK, so the delta function is one way to get to that. Um, but I what I what I also wanted to do was show uh, the way that I talked with John about it to bring it into a channels report. So you could go into a channels report right off the bat with the map that we have and and you can set up these channels i've done it by clicking on the little plus sign and selecting a channel and plugging in either the average or the average uh you know uh, min max average whatever it is for the channel and so i what i've got here is you see these channels i got speed min max i've got the average throttle position for the entire lap i've got the the lambda for the entire lap the average and uh, you can see that it's some big numbers there. And that is uh, because it's averaging for this particular 
channels report as it sits right now, it is averaging this lambda value over this entire lap, not when he's at full throttle, right? And that's why he was wanting to do that math channel that with the if, if statement to, uh, to talk about um, why that, um, uh, to filter it down, right? And he, but, he, but he doesn't want to do it with a math channel. So what I suggested to, to John is let's build a special map, a map just for acceleration zones in your data where then we can come in and have the channel report uh, break this track segment down into a, um, uh, a full throttle area. So, so lap, you know, this, in this case, the AIM default map here for Race Studio 3, it's called number 11 for this little section because it just started at one and went through. But let's, uh, let's talk about building a, a, a map specifically to do what John is after. And so what you do is you, is you up here in the uh, upper right-hand corner, there is, a, is an icon that opens the split division selector. And what we're going to do is build a map. I've already built it, but I'm going to show you, uh, you know, how, how it's done, and then we're going to jump ahead. But if I open that up, what you're going to do is you're going to see all of the track map segment files that you have created for the track where the data is from. Now I have done some things. Uh, I, I build a lot of these because there's power in having the map segments built in in certain areas. So, but when you first start, it's going to look something like Portland International without the chicane. He ran with the chicane here. If the they sometimes run this track straight through, you would be using this one, and that's what most of yours will look like when you first go to the track map segment uh, option here. You'll have just the RS3 splits will be the, by by default. And what you want to do is you want to leave that one alone. Typically, I do. So you highlight it, and you come in and you say, I want to clone it. When you do, it's going to give you the option of, of giving a, a new one a name. I have built uh, four additional ones already, one of them called Spec Racer Forward Wide Open Throttle. Um, and that's what we're just going to go ahead and grab that one instead of building a new one here just for the, for the sake of time. But you could come in here. I tend to, uh, uh, leave the PIR chicane piece there, but I uh, but I give it a new name here and uh, and then save it, okay. But in this case, I'm going to go right to what I what we've already built, and I'm going to show you how we adjust it and and make it uh, the way we want. So, spec racer forward wide open throttle is what I'm calling it. You could build your own, give it your own names. I'm going to click on OK. Race Studio Three always comes up with a a, a dialog box here that uh, says, do you want to use this, this new segment map for all sessions run on the same day? And almost always, you're going to say yes. If it was just a one-time thing, you might want to say no, and then it just applies it to the, to the session you have open. But once you build this, you're probably going to go back and look at your practice and your qualifying and your, in your you know, race one and race two, and you want to look at the data for everything with this new map, this, new, this map that you've changed the, uh, the segments on. So I'm going I'm to say yes. I want to apply this. You highlight it. And when you click on OK, this message comes up. I'm going to say yes. Let's apply that. And what you see here now, instead of having all of those default aim split numbers up here, you now have, you know, a turn three, the straightaway between three and four, turn six, straightaway, uh, turn seven, the back straight that we just talked about. And how do we adjust those? How do we, if I had just made a copy and I wanted to adjust it, we have lots of webinars about how to uh, to, to do segments, but the specifics about this particular one is we want a track map segment that matches his full throttle run and where the where the uh, the lambda or the fuel pressure is steady, right? So what you need to do is let's I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust this one because it looks like if I put that cursor right where that edge is, I have colorized mine by the way, and you can do that with the colors over in options. I've met, I've highlighted just put a little bit of a a color tent at the same color as the segment color. So I can easily see where these start and end. And that might be something that you, uh, that you might want to, to do as well. But um, the, uh, so right here is where it starts and it's, it's into the full throttle and it's just before the edge. And that's just on this one lap. So another thing I do is I always come up and I always turn on at least three laps, maybe even more. I want to get an idea that the driver has gotten to full throttle and we didn't cap 
we're, we're not applying a full throttle assumption for a, a bunch of laps. And one time he was uh, tried to back up the corner and, and uh, get on the throttle a little bit uh, a little bit later or something. So I bring up a bunch of laps. You can see there is a little bit of difference of when he was on and off the throttle on these different laps. And then uh, and let's say that this back straightaway, I wanted to to shorten it up, maybe all the way up here to just after this shift, let's say. The way you do that is you come up and you and you can just slide these bars back and forth early versions of race studio three you could just do that without turning the ability to do that on right and uh, so you could come up here and you could grab that and move it now what they've done what emiliano and his team has done is the the splits are locked so you can't accidentally make these so let's turn that message off and if we right click above them you now have a message here that says let's unlock the splits management so i'm going to do that now i can come up and I can grab this one here and I can bring that one up to just past that, that shift, let's say. You see that the back straight segment, and I might wanna do that on all of them, and maybe maybe that's real close to the end of throttle. Maybe I wanna bring that one back just a little bit because we wanna get some good numbers of full throttle run, right? And uh, so there, here's another nice little front, uh, this, uh, this little segment here where the, uh, it's this little segment here where the driver was also at full throttle, a nice clean full throttle where the where the pressures were, but I, maybe I wanna shorten that up just a little bit, maybe. So adjust your map, right? And, uh, and get it where, maybe get rid of all of the other corners and just have greens for, for the for the uh, acceleration zones you can do it with reds it doesn't matter but uh, i like to do green green for accelerate green for go right and then um and when you get these things adjusted the way that you want it will time out and shut the the ability to uh, move those those links these these segments but or you can come up and just hit the lock uh, splits management and turn that back off okay those I have adjusted this wide open throttle, Spec Racer Ford wide open throttle uh, track map to have some green segments where the acceleration zone is happening. And then what you do is you come into the channels report and um, I'm gonna turn off, turn off a couple of those laps just to get that a little bit cleaner. Uh, you can come into the channels report and now at first you think, okay, well, that hasn't done me a whole lot of good. I'm still, my average throttle is 65% for the, for the entire lap because that's the default that you see in channel reports. And the, uh, of course the Lambda is still up, still high. You have an option in the channels report though to review your data, not just by the full lap that it's defaults as, but you have the option of coming up in here and, um, and, and turning on segments. So choose if to consider splits in the report. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to say, let, let's look at the splits. It's, it's going to split based on the attached map, the map that is active. Uh, so boom, show splits. And what you see is the, the um, there's a whole lot of data in here now. And so what we want to do is we want to scroll down and find, remember we named that back straightaway. So that's what we're looking for is, we could look at any of the other ones too, but uh, I'm gonna come down and find, um, there's the back straight. I scroll down, here is the back, the split that is named back straight. And then now we can look at this and that first lap, he wasn't full throttle all the way. So let's go ahead and, and uh, unselect that one. And now you can see that the split that we created is now segmenting out this data. Uh, of, of that we want to see and it's all at 100% if, if there was a lap if there was a yellow flag situation in the middle of the race and you had some laps there that uh, that uh, were not at 100% just come over here and uncheck those laps if they happen to be there and so then your statistics here at the bottom you're not only seeing what the uh, what the, the lambda value was for each time through that run which is about 13 seconds worth of data you're seeing the lambda values you're also seeing the fuel pressure just in this segment where it was at full throttle because we determined that with our track map you can see what the map uh, manifold air pressure was your ignition uh, and then but you can come down here and now get the average for all laps that you have active so it was 100 percent throttle was the average 
the uh, the lambda for all of these is 0.89 was the average. You can see that that was actually pretty close. We got one there that was a 0.9, but overall the average, the the max, the min, and then the standard deviations. You can see what the fuel pressure average was for all of the runs down through that area. You know, in this case, let's turn those back on, those three laps, because they were actually good. So we, what we've got, uh, we start on lap two, go to 23. So there's 21 laps, 21 runs of 13.7, almost 14 seconds each at full throttle to get the numbers that John wanted. And he didn't want to uh, build a, uh, uh, a math channel to do that. He, he was trying to filter out the data. Well, instead of filtering out with math, we filtered it out to areas where the driver was at full throttle. That is a powerful tool. Uh, a lot of people don't realize you can come in and turn on segmenting and, and review the data in each segment, uh, not just the overall lap, which is the way most people most people do that. Okay, so the uh, a, a pretty a pretty handy tool to jump in there and and, um, and take a look at that. Let's say if you wanted to add a channel, we'll quickly just go over a couple of these things. It's the green plus sign. You could come in and you could add any channel of the channels that you have, math channels or regular channels. Uh, they're all in here. You could do a sort for something if you wanted to. And you, then you have a lot of options on what to do with that, that channel. So you could add a channel, you could take away, let's say we don't want um, the, uh, the average battery voltage. Let's say we don't want that one. So you could come in and hit the little red X and you could go find the average battery voltage right here, battery voltage, and you could just click on that and it's not there anymore. Let's say that since this Lambda is what's really, really important to you, maybe you want it right here at the first column, just as a way to make that easier for you to find. This little, uh, this little uh, vertical line with the red dot by it is the sort items. If you click on that, you have the order that they're in right now, and you could take Lambda. What you need to do is drag and drop these items to sort them with the direction there. Let's put that up to the top. Let's just drag that up to the top and click on OK. And now you have your Lambda, the one your eye wants to go to the fastest in John's case. Maybe fuel pressure was next. So if we wanted to do that, we'd come in here, we'd grab fuel pressure, bring that right below Lambda and click on OK. So now he has his two most important things he wants to find. I'm a visual guy. I like to find stuff like that quickly and make it where I get to, get, gets to be a habit for me. So uh, you can add channels, take them away, and sort these into a way that's, uh, that works for you. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about um, in here, two things I want to talk about. One of them is this little printer looking icon over here. A lot of you want to take this data out of here and maybe take it into a, a CSV file or into Excel. Uh, you can do that by clicking on this little export uh, channels report to a file. It's it's almost universal in Ray Studio 3. You're going to see this little this little icon up here, and you could take this entire report and export it right out to an Excel file or a CSV file, uh, and, and then do some work with it outside if you wish. Uh, but uh, most people get what they need out of the channel report, obviously. But we do have some some export functionality in here to get the data out if you wish. Okay. So, and then the, um, the last thing I thought I would, uh, I thought we would just talk a little bit about is a couple of these other icons that are up here. Uh, I love, I really like personally this, this histogram look. It gives me a quick visual. If one of them is way out of place, you can start to see that the number is larger just by the number one, the size, but also the colors. That is handled by this little paint bucket right here. If you hover over it, choose the report type. You have the option to draw as a histogram, which is what I have them on right now. You could go back to the classic Ray Studio 3 style, which is just, just the numbers with the colorization of red being the uh, you know, the, 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 the maximum value, blue being the minimum value, and, uh, and black being the, the ones that are in between. So you have that one if you're used to that with Ray Studio 2. And, and, but I, I, um, I, I like the histograms, that a little bit extra color, and it uh, and helps me find, find everything. So, okay, that was, um, that was one of them. And the other one, and it gets real busy here really quickly. So what I'm gonna do in order to show this last one is I'm gonna take the segments out looking at the back straight away. So let's turn off the splits. Let's hide those. 
And then another button in here that a lot of people don't use very often is the, uh, is the side items, uh, manage side items. You can, for every one of these data points that's in here, you could say, okay, well, yeah, I've got this speed here at this minimum speed, but what was my RPM uh, uh, along with every one of these other data items? What was my brake pressure? What was my throttle position? You know, whatever it is, any other channel that you want and multiples you can do. So if I come in here and I search for RPM, oops, RPM, the lights on my uh, keyboard had turned off. Uh, so I, I want to turn on the SRF RPM function and click on OK. Now you have an RPM heading right below the, the, the channel value, tells you what it is. And so at every one of these data points, it tells you what your RPM was at that speed, at the minimum speed. The maximum speed where people might want this a little bit more, what was my RPM right there at the end of the straightaway at the highest speed? You now have the ability to it's been in there for a while, but a lot of people don't know about it. You can see what your RPM was at that max speed. You can see what your, you know, whatever channel, it, it doesn't work in averaging, obviously, because it needs a, an exact data point. But it, uh, so that's why you're not seeing it here under the average values. It needs, a, it needs to know exactly where this minimum battery voltage happened. Then, of course, it can apply what the RPM was at that point. So uh, side items, uh, a handy little thing there. You can apply two or three if you wanted to have the throttle position, the RPM, and the brake pressure at when something happened, you, you could uh, stack all those up there if you wish. So I'm going to turn the I'm going to turn that uh, that item back off. The way that you do that is just uncheck the box and then click on OK. Back to what it was. Okay, that's a that's an interesting thing to uh, to to look at. Once you get this set up. We'll say it, uh, I'll say it this time. I'll probably say it a couple more times is always come in and save your profile. Uh, I've got this profile called SRF Barnum and, uh, and, I, and I just continue to save that. Uh, and uh, no matter what I do, I come in, hit the little button and hit save, I, save profile. Every, you, you, you do two or three changes, adjustments, tweaks to your, whatever your output wants to be. Make sure that you save that. That's, uh, that's just always a good idea. One last thing that a lot of people don't know about uh, channel reports is you can get into the data directly from something you see here that you're concerned about. So uh, what's a good example of, here's a battery voltage that's out of the ordinary, let's say. The, it's the minimum battery voltage, it's 13.2 and everything else is, is here. Hmm. What is that? So in a normal world, what you would end up doing is you would look at that, you go, okay, I see that, what lap was it? It was on lap three. You go into the channel, uh, into the into a, a normal area. You go select lap three, and you'd find where that battery voltage was low, and you try to figure out maybe it was oil pressure, maybe it was a fuel pressure spike, you know, whatever, whatever you see. But on any of these channel reports where there's min and maxes, what one of the coolest things that we can do is you can come in here and just double click on that thirteen two, and you can see that the active lap that is that has been selected uh, by the software. And I think I turned off the other ones, but this little box says what the active lap is in the data file that we're looking at. It happens to be uh, the best lap and, and it's uh, got a red box around it. That's the lap that's active here. When we're in the channels report, it's identifying that in your other tab, that's what you're looking at, lap, lap uh, 12. So if I come in here and I just double click on the 13.2, they're hyperlinked, boom, boom, I double clicked. You'll notice now that the active lap is lap three. And if I go into the working, my working tab, the cursor has gone to right here. And remember it was battery voltage. So if I, uh, if, if I go in here and I look at, um, look, look for the, the battery and I turn that channel on, there is, can't see it, it's, it's a little hard to see, but if I uh, change that color really quickly, you, maybe you can see it a little bit better. I could put it on another channel, but I'm going to move the cursor off of it. But that voltage is at 13.2 right there. But if I pull that off, you can see there's a spike there. You'd want to go dig in and figure out why it's 13.4 to 13.2, not a big deal. But but uh, I wanted to show you that it's kind of a really, really valuable tool to you. It makes your data analysis much easier by looking at a channel report and going, OK, well, you know, I see that little difference there. What what happened? And just double click on it here in the channels report. It jumps you right back into, it puts the 
it selects the lap and puts the cursor in your your uh, in your time distance graph. So very very powerful. If you have a, a low oil pressure or a fuel, fuel pressure was a drop at some point, you want to go find that real quickly and see what's going on. That's the way to do that. So very powerful tool. Okay. The um, any questions about channel reports and and creating a channel map? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a track map segments to 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 leverage that into looking at the uh, showing the splits and then going and finding in any acceleration zone and and being able to see what those data values were based on what you've built. Very uh, very very powerful tool and hopefully everybody has uh, got a pretty good handle on on how that looks and how that works. That's a uh, I think you're going to find that I know John found good value out of that. Uh, uh, I think he mentioned a little bit ago in the chat that he is uh, he has been using this and is uh, is finding great value in it for him. So perfect. Okay, let's talk. Let's take a, um, a change in direction here and uh, part of the same theory or the same thought process of this webinar, which is to 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 find good ways of, of using data that are that are, are maybe a little bit easier and quicker and faster for, for a, a user to get more data, um, more valuable data out of. So the, the next one I want to talk about, so let's turn off that, uh, let's turn off that battery voltage. The, the next one I want to talk about is, is math channels. And this is um, the, um, what we've done with the software is we've created, I'm going to open up the math channel function just so you can see it. There is, um, there is a groups of math channels. If you haven't used it, we've done other videos on, on some of the details on this that you can go take a look at. But um, we've got, I, I've stored math, uh, math channels into different groups. There are a couple that are default when you first open up. If you haven't built any math channels, nobody shared anything with you. You're gonna open this up and I believe the only two that will be here is a GPS group and a vehicle group. And, um, and what we're trying to do is, is make some GPS based math channels for all AIM users. Every, virtually all of our hardware that's out there is gonna have a GPS sensor attached to it. And the channel name is universal across all of them. And so we'd like to make some things that are a little bit easier for, for, um, for those who want to grab these math channels and just apply them to their, to their, uh, to their data real quickly and get some value. And if I open that up, I'm going to turn those off just so you can kind of see what it, uh, what they look like. I'm going to, I'm going to just going to uh, switch off all the channels for this particular data file. This is what it will look like when you first open it up. You're going to click on the heading. You're going to have all of these math channels. Years ago, I built a spreadsheet and a and a math channel file for Ray Studio 2 that had some of these basic things. It was basically some switches to say, even based on GPS longitudinal Gs and lateral Gs, because that's what we have in the GPS based uh, channels, is if you're on the brakes, of course, the longitudinal G is going to dip down. And if I turn that channel on, your GPS longitudinal G, and, and I did some some checking and, and it was, we could pretty much catch every time the car was, the driver was actually on the brakes, even if we didn't have a brake pressure sensor or brake switch, a solo on a, on a motorcycle with, that didn't have ECU data or on a vintage race car or a, somebody just stuck it in their car. When the, when the longitudinal G went, went greater than, uh, less than, bigger negative number, than point, uh, 0 0.15, typically the driver was on the brakes. And then what, the value to people is we have this switch. Now it goes from zero to one when your negative G's are, are, are greater than 0.15. This little switch goes from a zero to a one and says the brakes are on, okay? Then we can do a whole lot of other things with the brakes. We can add up the time that you're, the time that you're on the brakes for per lap. We can add up the, the distance you're on the brakes, uh, percentage of a lap. We can add it up how long you're on the brakes over um, the the entire session. If you're trying to track your your brake pad wear and and uh, some other things, not just in time but also in distance, that's what you're seeing here with all this GPS brake session time, the amount of time during the entire session you were on the brakes. So we have these things that are um, that uh, pretty pretty easy to set up. Emiliano has tweaked them a little bit, 
and they're all sitting here ready for you underneath a uh, the GPS group. And the way that you do it for your on your computer is you come in here, you open up the math channel function, the little formula icon up here, and go there. And there's a little cogged wheel that you can just click on. And it says, I want to enable this for all of, in this case, it's a serial number of an Evo 4S is what's on John's uh, Spec Racer Ford and with the serial number. Anytime this Race Studio, in, uh, Race Studio 3 sees data from that Evo 4 with that serial number, it's going to automatically add all of these math channels in. If you want to have, you have two or three teammates and you just want these channels to be on for everybody, you can enable all of these channels for all sessions. If you bring somebody else's data into your PC, it's going to automatically apply these channels. So um, if you look at it, when I do that, they're, they're highlighted with stars that are filled in. That means they're going to be applied to every channel that you have. Every, every data file that comes in, these math channels are going to be applied to it and added over here in your list. If I come in and I, and I take those back off and I say, let's turn those off. And then let's come in and let's enable just for the Evo 4, just for this data logger. You're going to see that that same star shape, but they're but they're hollow. They're uh, the, they got a, the, the they're not solid stars, but they're hollow. That is telling you that there's a math channel being applied, but only for certain loggers. Okay, and if there's no star there at all, the that these math channels are not being applied to this data at all. So I'm just going to leave that that way and click on OK exit out and now you can see over here in the in the list over here that there is all of these math channels are on there and if I uh, if I turn the um, the break on you can see that it's picking up based on longitudinal G's it's picking up when the driver has hit the brakes and there's the uh, the brake is on the brake is on right here with uh, the car was more than 0.15 negative G's in this area and uh, when he's when he's accelerating the car, of course, it's in a positive G area for the longitudinal Gs, the brake is off. You don't have to have a, uh, a brake pressure sensor or a brake switch to get this, to get this strength, it, just the GPS based channels. The, uh, we're gonna dig into these more in just a second, but I do wanna show you something we're not gonna go into detail with today, but under the vehicle uh, group, we've tweaked these a bit. And, uh, and those same basic channels are here, but let's say break, uh, break on under this one, you'll see that it's using a, a channel function and says it's gonna go look into your data. And this is where you'll use it if you have a brake pressure sensor or you know, a, a brake switch or, or, or some sort of sensor based thing to help us understand when you're on the brakes. In this particular case, the default is is it's going to look into your channel functions and say, do you have anything that is, is assigned the channel function of brake pressure? And if so, it's going to grab that channel automatically and it's going to say if it's greater than 100 units, PSI in our case here, that is going to go from a zero to a one and the brakes are going to come on. So uh, we have one that is, is real easy for everybody to use, which is the GPS based one but not quite as exact because it's not sensor based. So, you, you know, if you go up a really steep hill or you lift off the throttle just for a second, the, the longitudinal G's may get up there and trigger that. So we have to, uh, so sometimes it's better if you have sensors, but if you don't have sensors, you use the GPS ones. So we're gonna have these all built for you as well. And some other ones that are in here uh, that uh, are ready for you to go. And which is what's gonna make your use in the future uh, and we've been talking about it here and here and there. The um, uh, let me bring up, let me search, do a quick search, and find the brake pressure. So what what's more important or becoming going to be more important to you uh, for a number of different reasons? This is just one of them. Is what function you have assigned to all of your channels? This function right here is what is that uh, some of those math channels in the uh, in the vehicle subgroup. Uh, is going to be taking it from. So as you configure your, your logger and you add a front brake pressure sensor, make sure you take the time to go down and, and tell it that it's a front brake or a rear brake, or it's just a brake pressure. 
uh, because that's what we're searching for in some of those math channels. So make sure you set your channel functions correctly for your for your configuration. Any questions on that, give me a holler or uh, there are some other uh, videos that we've talked about that specifically. So keep that in mind. Okay, so what's the next step? We've just turned on all those math channels, right? I'm a big fan of taking the um, uh, Ray Studio 3 and building it into something that's very easy for me to find the data that I need to find real quickly. Yeah, we've got those math channels. And if I turn this off, uh, that filter, you can see that there is a, you know, here they all are. And you'd have to turn them on and turn off some of these. What I've done is I, I like to build little tabs and um, uh, uh, more of these tabs to be focused on a specific task. Let's use the example of breaking. And a lot of people don't use this functionality here, but I just wanted to show it to you is I've actually got a bunch of tabs here, but I've just got them turned off to make this easier to see and work with. And if you click on the on the custom add or show a custom layout button, a list is gonna come up here first that has tabs that I've built, but yet just have hidden away, haven't turned off just to, to keep them, um, make it a little easier to see. I've got one that's called breaking. And I could either hide it, which it's hid right now. I could delete it, get rid of it, or I could show it. So I'm going to click on the show, show the breaking tab. There's the breaking tab now is up there. And because I have turned on all of those AIM uh, default math channels, the one that with break on, here's that one. And then I've created this custom tab here, named it breaking. And then I have put all of my different things that work, uh, that are part of breaking in this, configured them, set the scaling, all of that stuff, and then saved my, my user profile. So it is just sitting there waiting for me. And here's a perfect example. It's, uh, you know, here we are. Uh, let's, let's show the best lap just for, for fun. Uh, here is uh, John's son, JD, racing the car here at Portland. And uh, he's on the brakes. The brake is the, the, the GPS break on function is happening here. You, with these math channels we've done, we've done all the hard work for you. How long for this lap was JD on the brakes? So if you come over and put your cursor near the end of the lap, you can see GPS break distance for 2,081.1 feet. Uh, JD was on the brakes uh, during the course of this lap. Here's where it was on, here's where it was happening. There's the, uh, there is the, the distance right there. There is the time he was on the brakes. He was only on the brakes for 18 seconds for this particular lap. Uh, we have a percentage of the lap. Uh, you can see here at first, of course, it was zero because he was on the front straightaway, hadn't hit the brakes yet. Zero percent of the time was he on the brakes. And then all of a sudden he was on the brakes for a good chunk of time here going into turn into the chicane. Uh, at one point there, he had been on the brakes for 60, almost 61% of the lap, more than half of the lap because it was early in the lap and it was a big braking zone, right? But that kind of settles down as he comes along towards the end here. And uh, you could check this against other good laps or bad laps. He was on the brakes for 21% of, uh, of the time. The P, the D, the T stands, a little shortcut for you, is uh, how much time of that lap time, T for time, P for percent, D for distance. That's how you kind of read those. You can rename those if you wish uh, to make that a little easier for you. Um, and then one other thing that we do, uh, especially under braking, but I think we've added it to all of them. We also have one down here that says how much time was the, the GPS break uh, on for the entire session in distance. And so far on this lap, Again, remember, this is like lap 11 or something. Uh, he had been on the brakes for 26,092 feet and 246 seconds at that point. If I zoom out and look at the entire, I'm going to hit the snap button and jump all the way out. Here is that channel because it's it's not resetting at the end of every lap like these other ones do. At the beginning of the next lap, it always goes back to zero, just the way the math channel is written. So you can see how much time or distance or percent of the lap you are, and it resets at the start finish line. This one here is set up to go through the entire run. So here at the last, at the end of the session, as he comes driving into the 
into the paddock area about to, you could look down here and you could see the entire number of feet that he was on uh, on the brakes and the number of uh, seconds. You could do even tweak that math to go to minutes if you wish. And a great way of having the max for every session and then have that uh, as part of your record keeping of how how long you were on the brakes. Uh, you know, on particular different tracks, you use the brakes a little bit more. So this is just the tab set up for braking. I'm gonna turn that, go back to a, just a single lap and go back to the best lap just for, just for fun. Um, somebody said, uh, boy, wouldn't that be kind of cool if you had that into a channels report? Well, one of the things that I had have, I save is I've got a, uh, I've got a, a channel report just for braking that, that we've built. So let's show that one. Let's see how you might use a, a channel report. Again, we haven't built any math channels. We haven't done anything. It's all set up. And uh, anybody that contacts me, and I'll put it into the YouTube comments uh, uh, description down below, I'm going to make this uh, user profile available for anybody that wants it. They can grab, uh, uh, download the profile and do an import into their Ray Studio 3 and have this set up with these hidden uh, uh, tabs, if you wish. But here is um, here is a breaking one, channel report just for breaking. Remember, I had this one for just a general overall one, but we were looking at some uh, track map segments. This one is channel report breaking, only for breaking items. And I set it up this way. I have a time distance graph so I can kind of see where the breaks were happening if I want to. I got a map to kind of tie it all together. But then over here, I've got the, my maximum front brake pressure per lap. I've got my rear brake pressure. I've got my bias. The uh, There was a, a channel in uh, in his data here that uh, called bias right here. And if I put the cursor into one of these braking zones, in fact, let's just turn the bias on just so we can, I seen it just there, it is right there. Let's turn it on. What this channel is doing, the, the way that uh, it is set up, it's the bias is 0% when he's not on the brakes and when it exceeds a certain brake pressure. Um, it tells exactly what it does the math between the front and the rear and his, and it's reporting back his bias is 56.2% right there in that millisecond where I've got the cursor right. And so what this bias channel report is doing is it takes all of these it ignores the zeros puts all of these together for each lap and says what your average brake bias was. So, you know, you can, you can always see these little tails where it's where it's moving around a little bit, but uh, this is averaging your entire lap. So if you want to make a, an adjustment, you found that in the, in the past, in the rain, you, you have found that you want to, you want to put your brake bias to, you know, you pick the number, right? 50%, maybe a, maybe a little bit more in the dry than in the wet. Then you can then go to the car in the rain, you've, you've noticed that it worked real well, or in this case, John uh, JD has said, <clears throat> boy, my brakes really felt good. And and go into the data, figure out exactly where he had it. It was at 54 and a half percent on average. Uh, so then before the race, you would go in and crank in 54, you could have that set up on your display. And uh, if it didn't work, dial in another couple percent for the next one, go run it, double check it here and, uh, and, and have a pretty good idea. How much time you were on the brakes per lap how much distance you were on the brakes per lap. And you can see some laps were higher than others. This one here on lap three with new tires and racing away, he was uh, he was on the brakes three seconds less than the lap before, a couple seconds less than uh, than maybe the average. So that 17.5, maybe we go study that, try to understand uh, why he was able to be on the brakes so much less and, and such a less distance. A channel report is a great place to look at uh, this kind of data. I have some other ones that are built in here as we kind of close this down. Don't have any questions there yet, but uh, if you have some, you might want to do those. We've got uh, maybe five minutes or so. I have some other ones that maybe it's uh, maybe it's coasting. I'm going to show the coasting one. I've already had it. I've built it. I've set it up. I've saved as part of the profile. Uh, I've I've have them saved as hidden, but uh, you can come in and of course unhide any of them right here. Now here's a coasting one. The uh, the definition of coasting in in the aim math channels if i come in here and click on this you can see the definition is if your gps brake on is equal to zero in other words the logger and the math channel is saying that the, it is not exceeded that point remember we had it 0.15 negative 
if it is a zero, which means it's not uh, uh, more breaking than that, it's a zero. And it puts that together with throttle. In other words, there's a there's a throttle one we didn't look at, but it's if the positive Gs are, are, are such, we know you're accelerating here on the throttle. And there's a corner one that says if you are more than two tenths of a G either way, we assume you're in a corner. If you're not on the brakes or on the throttle or on in a corner, we make this assumption that you're coasting and that's this CST on. Okay, let me exit out of there. There are a few spots that uh, that he was coasting in this case. It's not 100%, but, um, and it would be better if it was attached to throttle and brake, you know, throttle position and brake pressure. But in this case, it's seen a couple, of, and it's the, almost always the transition uh, between acceleration and before you get on the brakes, there's a little short area here. If we add, put the cursor here to the left edge, we can see that this amount of time that the, the, the math channels calculated that you were coasting was only 0.6 uh, tenths of a second. It was 0.7% uh, of the lap, uh, 98.1 feet. And, uh, and uh, for the entire session up until this point, it's been 33.6. You gotta be a little careful on that. The out lap uh, typically will give you a, a, a a bit of coasting when you, you probably shouldn't be calculated into this, but but uh, but you can see the the individual lap stuff pretty easily. Just another power, another power of these math channels to very quickly, very easy, and just by turning them on with the the, the fresh update of production that's going to be come out later today, these are all going to be ready for you under the math channel function. You don't have to go in and tweak them. They're using the GPS based. Uh, information. Um, the other thing that might confuse you in closing is you may see that this meters per second in the formula and you might feel like you want to go in and, and adjust that. But uh, uh, please understand that the math in the background may be done that way, but the values that come out of the math channels, uh, and this is something that's fairly new, the math channels that come out of the function uh, out of math channels as you use them, even though it may be using metric values in the background. If I exit out of that, the unit you're going to find in your final result over here, feet, time, you know, time is time is time, but uh, feet especially uh, for us, we want uh, our, our units that way, are, are going to be based on the units that are, uh, that. oops, I, I do that a lot. The, uh, you have to go back here and then, uh, oh, geez. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm. I know what I'm doing now. Emiliano's dying over there, and then I pushed the wrong button there too. You have your language and unit preferences, and uh, in here you have set your units of measure that you want for your uh, data analysis. And in here, on the one that we're looking at, which was a breaking distance, let's say, you 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 come down here, you find the distance um, unit, and you come over here, and if it's set to feet here that will be what is used uh, to display the data to you in your analysis. If you were to change this right now to, uh, to miles or to, to, uh, to, to meters, uh, no matter what that math channel says, that's how it's going to display the data to you. And then you can change it uh, individually inside of Ray Studio 3 by changing. Uh, I, I'm going out on a limb a little bit here, but uh, if we come in here, you should have the option to change it here for the individual session. But uh, but the general overview is it's going to find uh, whatever your units that you've stored for your unit types. So that's really important. Don't worry about the math channel as much for the uh, for the for the units that it's using to do the math in the background. That may be more important if uh, in other math channels, you know, if you become an expert and start building your own math channels, you may want to, to, to set those up differently. But for these default ones, um, you're gonna use the stuff that comes out of there. So I hope that helps a little bit on, on some of those things. I don't have any open questions. The, um, uh, so we'll start to kind of close this one down. This was a this was a, a couple of things I wanted to just chat about. Uh, thank you, JD, for number one bringing up the topic of the channels report uh, as far as uh, getting some averaging without doing uh, uh, without having to build the, the the math channels to separate data when it wasn't full throttle. Figured out a way to do that without having to go through some of that. Uh, some added complexity, uh, just tweaking the math channels as uh, uh, tweaking the track map segments. That was very, very handy. Thank you for allowing us to use your data to show 
the, 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 the information. And then the math channels getting more and more powerful all the time. And uh, I know Emiliano is working on some other ones. So um, I, what was really cool about this one is we were able to come in and talk about the, um, the, the simplifying your data analysis. Hopefully we gave you some nice tools that you don't have to dig in super deep and build a bunch of stuff and but yet, yet tweak some basic functionality here to get some really powerful data. So uh, Emiliano, you have, uh, I see you, you turned your camera back on. You have anything to, to kind of add as we're kind of closing this one up? Yeah, we were, I just want to add that uh, we were asked for a, a little bit of, of help in understanding what uh, the, the different functions uh, into the analysis, uh, uh, into the math channels window uh, do. So we added the, um, the, the help button and that links to an, an HTML page that's uh, shipped with, uh, with the installation of the software. If you click there, you will be shown a help that is describing uh, a little bit of functionalities of, uh, of the Ray Studio and of the math channels. Uh, uh, so, and this is I new think... and not just in the math channels, as Emiliano says, there, uh, Emiliano is, is adding I'm, to this and he's done a lot I'm of building it this. <laughs> very, uh, very quickly. I, I would uh, normally, I'd say we're slowly adding to this, but he's been adding to it very quickly. It's, it's even if you're at the track and you don't have internet access, it's actually storing it as part of your, uh, where you've installed Ray Studio. So it's just mm -hmm. a little little HTML file. It uses your browser to open it up and 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 review it. Uh, it updates how uh, it up, does it update when Ray Studio does it, like a track map update, you know, check and all of that. I'm not sure when no, it updates it, it, this. Uh, no, it uh, updates with uh, with the installer. So okay, so every time you either update Ray Studio three or or install the first time, this gets a, a fresh version. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a bunch of stuff in here that you might want to go look at. Uh, lookup tables. Somebody asked very early on in the webinar about lookup tables. Jump in here, go to your math channels, uh, uh, click on that little uh, icon to get in here. There's uh, some talk about lookup tables in here. So uh, this is a document that's just going to continue to be built. Emiliano and I are planning of having uh, little links in here that'll be short 20, 30, maybe up to a minute long little short video clips. It'll be hyperlinked in here. Of course, that has to go out onto the internet. We're not going to store those locally on your machine. But if, if there's something we can describe better in a very, very quick video and show it, we'll build a real quick video and you'll you'll have links to it here as well. So this is where we're heading for the help and, uh, and, and individual little items like that. So thank you very much, Emiliano, for, for building that. You're welcome. So let me close that out, minimize that down. Again, that uh, that that little green uh, button, you're going to start to see that show up more and more inside of the software. Not It's not just going to be here in the math channels. There's going to be help buttons in other spots as well. If you looked closely, you might have seen it. When I clicked on this guy, there was also open help page for math channels. It would have taken us to the same spot. Yep. So, And you're going to see that in other submenus and, and stuff in the software uh, in other places. So... Perfect. Anything else you want to add about some of the stuff we talked about today, uh, Emiliano, as we close this down? No, I think uh, I think I'm okay. Uh, I just uh, need feedbacks to <laughs> to make Restudio 3 better. So perfect. Please write. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, and uh, appreciate all, all of all of your help and in, uh, in putting that together. Um, pretty cool stuff there. Okay. With that, let me bring this back up. Let's. Um, Let's talk about where this video will be. For those of you, maybe you're watching this video later or, or here for the first time, there is a bunch of uh, YouTube videos out there from AIM Sports on our Learn Fast uh, uh, YouTube site. The, if, if you haven't been there before, just go to AIM Data, go to YouTube and search AIM Data and you'll find us. There's a, a currently about a, 228 videos out there with tons of tons of information and we're uh, we're going to be tweaking that page uh, soon, even breaking down some of these long form webinars and putting them into smaller videos that are very specific topics. Uh, this one, I'm going to probably try to break into two of them and have uh, one about channel reports and one about uh, the new basic math channel. So that'll be happening soon. So that's cool. Uh, customer support. Uh, that's what we do here at AIM. We're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics. This is what like we, we like to say. Um, it's, it's the heart of the season where our, our guys are, are out there at events. And uh, if you see them, give them a, give them a, give them a, a bottle of cold water that they'll appreciate it. It's hot out there.
but uh, they're there for your to help. And so uh, give us a call if you need anything. Email, do, do all the things, get a hold of us. Uh, very happy to help you. That's what we do. We're, we're customer support, so do that. Next webinar, of course, we're doing these every last Tuesday of every month. So the next one will be September 26th. Put that onto your calendar if you would, and um, uh, look forward to the next topics. Not 100% sure what they're going to be yet. These are always pretty fluid, and uh, we want to we base them on support calls, just like. Uh, um, John did with this one. It 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 piqued an interest and it showed a need, so we thought we would share it with uh, with everybody. So again, thank you very much, John, for helping us. But uh, come back and we'll do uh, something similar uh, on September 26th. So contact information. If uh, if I've said something you want to do, if you want the the uh, user profile that I had built that, that freely shareable, that uh, I'm happy to email that file to you so you can import it in. If you want to just have another user profile that you might want to tweak and make work for yours that did some of the stuff that I showed today, just drop me an email down there, Roger Name Sports, and uh, happy to do that. Emiliano talked about getting feedback to continue to make Race Studio 3 better. The email address, please, always, if you have questions, if you see something that's broken, if you want to tell them thanks, you know, whatever it happens to be, software at aim-sportline.com is, uh, is where you uh, contact them. Obviously, you can email me, you can email all, all of our uh, rest of our support techs here at AIM. But uh, if it's a software problem directly, please even CC or send them directly and CC me, what, however it works. But but uh, he is open to, and uh, a lot of our changes come because of feedback from, from users, especially folks that uh, attend these webinars and, and uh, learn that he's, he's available for this. So software at aim-sportline.com aim for feedback for Ray Studio 3 and get directly to to uh, Emiliano. So uh, with that, let's close this one down. I appreciate everybody being here and I hope you got some uh, good use out of it and looking forward to seeing you guys all, uh, all in a month. So we will talk to you soon.